Hi everybody, uh, welcome to part two. Obviously uh, in part one you've seen how we got the wagons from their uh, out the box condition into what you're looking at now here. Uh, these here have had the interiors uh, painted a little bit, they make them look a bit more grubby and uh, rusty like the prototype. And they've had the uh, markings where the door's been welded up roughly um, put in place with the paintbrush. Uh, the Mets represent uh, welded up seams that have gone uh, a bit sticky over time and corroded so they haven't got to be uh, overly accurate just the representation of what would be there on the prototype so uh, in this video we're going to show you how to get these wagons to go from looking like this to looking like this So to begin, my recommendation is to raid your spares box. Go through and find all the little bits and everything you've got here. Some old bits of fence posts and bits of over here. Some old bits of large scale uh, chromed parts of a, a model car. Um, the remains of a locomotive I cut up. That was a Backman Sound Class 37. And uh, these are the last couple of bits of panels remaining. They haven't already been dropped into wagons. They have all the engage model there. and. Uh, steel beams that have been uh, painted and weathered and then broken down to size to make them fit in the wagon a bit easier um, spare signal heads, bits of just general scrap and clutter uh, I also suggest using real metal um, it's something that's almost impossible to replicate the the finish of um, you can have a go and some bits look alright um, I'm quite happy with the look of the things I've done myself using plastic and card uh, with layers of paint and varnish um, but as good as I think they look, uh, they're not quite the same as a real piece of metal that's in there. And there's a lot of real metal used in the ones I've done, um, which not only adds to the look, but also adds to the weight of the model, which helps with running and everything else. Um, obviously, you're going to need paint um, and you know, obviously tone things down and add a bit of uh, weathering and rust effect there. Um, obviously, we'll use the pastels as well if needed. Um, and one of the best things I suggest for starting is some of this stuff. No tin foil, available in most kitchen drawers. And what I do is paint one side with a mix of uh, brown acrylic paint. And then when you strip it up into little pieces, a little bit I've got uh, here, all you do is just give it a bit of a scrunch for your fingers. And it makes little bits of scrap metal that you can just drop in the bottom of the wagons, as you can see it. Uh, and I use those there to like sort of hide the gaps a little bit and fill them out. And they look like um, bits of strip metal and the other well, bits that you do see in scrap yards and in scrap trains. So uh, I'll prep a few bits up with what I've got left and we'll show you how we put them in the wagons and how to uh, hopefully improve the look of these a little bit further. Okay, so as you can see, I uh, made a bit of a pile here of the uh, crumpled up foil, and you see it, uh, it looks alright, I think it's about, uh, about right for the sort of thing you see in these uh, wagons, carrying loose uh, scrap material. Uh, you'll notice in the bottom of one of them, I've dropped uh, a cut sheet of this stuff. It's like roofing felt that's got this stuff, uh, like chippings stuck to it. Um, I don't glue that in, I just let it sit in there. Uh, it's an interference fit, just cut them tight, fit around the edges. I think it just gives it a, a decent base layer to work on. Um, so when you look in there, any little gaps and bits looking in the bottom, you see something there, it's not just a smooth plastic base of the, the wagon you, you're looking at. 
Um, not all of them get them, that one won't. That will remain like it is. And so a few loose bits dropped in there. Um, I do something on you know, a few wagons, just kind of mix it up a bit. Um, adds a bit of variety to the look of uh, the stock. And uh, it also has a little bit of weight as well, so that's always handy. So we'll, uh, we'll move on now to loading it up. As you can see, I'm a little bit low now on uh, my scrap materials, what I've got left. Um, so we'll start off with some of the bigger bits. So I'll take a bit of this uh, locomotive side panel. And I'm just going to actually just sit it in the wagon like that there. Uh, a bit of steel span go in. And all we're going to do is just drop bits in to look as much as you can as natural as possible. It's kind of hard to pose things and make them look natural at the same time. Um, but it can be done. I know it's, it's a bit of a um, contradiction of terms. But sometimes you sort of look at bits and you think, does that look right uh, or not? So, as we said, I think that looks okay. And um, we just drop that bit maybe on there. See, that doesn't look right to me. So then we go there. Maybe that's a bit better, like that. And then with the loose scatter here, when we're happy with positioning a bit inside, just pick a few bits up and drop them in. You know, there's no real exact science to this, it is just basically building up uh, the contents of the wagon to look um, like the prototype. So if we put one side on here, look, a couple of bits sticking over the top there, that's all right. That's not the real thing. Um, so I've used those bits up now. I'll uh, go back over to the uh, scrap pile and we'll make up a few more bits to go in there and see what we've come up with. So, just be a minute. Okay guys, so we've put a few more bits in here, as you can see. There's a few bits of white metal casting I've dropped in there and uh, a few more uh, sort of general bits. Uh, don't worry too much like these were perhaps recognise a couple of items as being exactly what they are, maybe not completely post typical at this point because uh, there's a bit more when I drop in this one uh, so a little bit more of a, a coverall job but uh, overall so far I'm, uh, I'm not happy with the look of that there and how it's coming together so now I'm going to make it all stick together because obviously uh, if I don't glue it down it will fall out so that's where I recommend using Rocket Hot I don't normally plug uh, brands and products, but uh, I do rather like this. Now, it's a little bit, I'll use the word dangerous, <laughs> because it flows like water and it sticks everything to everything. So be really careful with your models and everything you're using it on and with, because if it goes in the wrong place, I'm hoping, I'm assuming they have a, a product to remove it, but if not, it could be a very expensive mistake. So. Just be careful when using it guys, but all I like to do is uh, get the lid off and uh, basically just pour it in around the edges and uh, it just sticks everything down. Uh, dries clear, very little to no residue, uh, not that I've noticed anything on the other models anyway. Uh, does the job, so uh, just a minute and we'll stick it all together. And there we go, uh, a few extra bits added as you can see, a bit more white metal casting dropped in there, a few bits of uh, chromed plastic, uh, sort of other miscellaneous bits, a bit more stripped in for, um, some of the plastic parts we've just pulled out of the scrap box, yeah rather happy with that, yeah, it looks, uh, looks okay for what this is. Uh, and that one there can now go in with the rest of the rake and uh, yeah 
I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So there you go guys. Um, as you can see in there, no evidence of the glue at all. And uh, I think you just put the glue on it. There you go. All stuck together, nothing loose, nothing falls out. As I. Easy. So I'd suggest, you know, sort of recommend uh, everyone has a go at this because uh, I think it's a pretty good uh, little technique. It's not my own original idea, far from it. Um, but uh, I think it's rather effective uh, in both looks and cost. So, you know, go for it, guys. Go and get the scrap box out and uh, have a go yourselves. And, you know, these wagons didn't only carry coal. So, uh, thanks for watching. Obviously, uh, comments below, always appreciated. Love to hear your thoughts on what we're doing. Um, big thanks to all subscribers and everything else. So, uh, cheers to everybody that's uh, come and joined the channel. And again, big thank you to everybody that's come back to us and seen what's going on. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.